What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be going over the SAT study routine that I believe is the best study routine that you can ever have for most exams and especially the SAT because this study routine will make sure that you get that 1600 or whatever score you are going for. Definitely a 200 point score improvement. So the first tip that I want to give you all to make sure you get the best uh, studying routine down is to make sure that you take a practice test every five days. Whereas there's a five day cycle that you want to follow, right? You have the the uh, math, reading, math, reading, practice test. That's how I like to break down the five day cycle. In fact, my tutoring company, Smart Minds Tutoring, link in the description below, actually follows this exact same cycle when we tutor our students, right? We will introduce a student with math, then reading, then math, then reading, and then a practice test. Sometimes we might do math, math, reading, reading, and then a practice test, but it's honestly depending on the student. So when you study, if you find that you get better results on the practice test, when you do math, reading, math, reading, instead of math, math, reading, reading, then just follow that. Otherwise you can switch or do uh, the same topic two days in a row, and then you switch to the other topic. And for some students, the first way works, some students, the second way works. So honestly, the thing you have to really decide is which way works best for you. But the practice test is a, without a doubt, you have to take it. And the reason I say this is because let's say you start studying math and reading, but you're studying wrong, right? Like you're not uh, looking into the topics uh, deep enough. You're only glancing at some topics. Maybe you're studying the topics that you already know. So you're not really improving. You're just getting better at the stuff you already know that you're already good at. So there's not much room for improvement and you're kind of just forcing it. You want to make sure you study the topics that you suck at, like probably um, imaginary numbers. Like how many of you all didn't know your eyes table? If I asked you what's I squared right now, do you know what the answer is? If I asked you what's I quad right now, do you know what the answer is? If not, then you suck at I imaginary numbers. So make sure you start studying that and that's a topic you would want to study on one of your math days. So that's how really this, this breakdown works, right? So the practice exam will give you insight into exactly what topics you are still bad at, what topics you are now good at, what topics maybe you um, did worse than usual, which topics did better than usual. It'll give you the most accurate assessment of your skills, which is really what you want to be able to track from week to week, because if you're not improving every single week, you know, there's a problem, right? Your studying isn't uh, that good, unless you're in the 1500 plus range, because if you're getting like 1560s, and on the next one, you get like a 1540. That's not that bad, honestly, at that point. There's probably just luck based as well as curve based because some SATs have different scoring uh, methods because of the curve that's placed on that respective SAT. So don't get discouraged because at that point, if you're that scoring that high, you're already getting an SAT score that's ex extremely competitive. You're, the SAT score requirement for like Harvard, MIT, Stanford is already met. So you don't, you don't even have to worry about the SAT anymore. Right, but if you are getting 1300 and then next thing you know, you get like a 1250 or like a 1240, then that's not good because one, 1300 is already not high enough. You want to get in the 1400 range. And if you got a 1300 and now you're going down to the 1200 range, again, not good enough. You want to get to that 1400 range because that range, you're in like the 95th percentile. So at that point, you can pretty much get into most colleges. And now, obviously, if you're going for like the top notch, like Harvard and beyond, we're trying to get a full ride scholarships to like top prestigious prestigious universities like University of Maryland College Park. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure you get in like that 1450 range slash 1500 range, especially 1500 range. At that point, you're kind of secured. And you still will get rejected. I still got rejected from Stanford, MIT, Berkeley. So SAT score again isn't everything. It's a holistic process. So make sure you also focus on your GPA, the extracurriculars, and your essay. The college essay is one of the most important things you can do. I'll talk about college essays more in a later video. This video is not for that. Now the second tip I want to give you all, and again, I say this in a lot of my videos, is to make sure you emphasize the SAT math section because it is the easier section without a doubt. I know some of you all might say, I suck at math, man. Like math is horrible. But you can really, you can improve pretty quickly. Like the math section is not a hard section to improve in. Once you learn all the tips and tricks, you can literally go from scoring like a 500 to an 800 definitely a 700 plus. So don't worry about like the, the nitty gritty of it. Once you start practicing SAT math and learn all the tips and tricks that I've taught, you know, like throughout my entire YouTube career, then you should be good. And now if you do not know where to find all these tips and tricks then check out my SAT math course in the description below, use code first 100 for 25% off and you will literally get all the tips and tricks that you need to know to get an 800 plus on the SAT math section. But since you're watching this video, I do want to reward you for watching this video. And I'll give you some tricks that you need to know for the SAT math section. Negative B array is some solutions. C array is a product of solutions. In order to get the I's table, which I talked about earlier in the video, all you have to remember is I. Right, i equals square root negative one. And the SAT will always give you this. They will always tell you i equals square root negative one. If you know your radical rule, square root negative one times square root negative one, you take out the radicals equals negative one. So i times i is i squared. So i squared is negative one. And then you do negative one times square root negative one, 
which will give you i times i squared, which is i cubed. So now you know the value of i cubed, now you know the value of i quad, and i uh, penta, i sexta, and so on. So that's how you get the i's table. All you need to know is a radical rule. So I probably just saved you all like, like 50 points right there. And of course, all the other tricks are included in my ST math course. So please be sure to check that out. Now, why do you want to learn tricks in general in terms of the reading section, writing section, and the math section? Well, without learning these tricks, you're gonna be pretty much the average student. And the average student is scoring like a 1090 because the average SAT score is a 1090. So if you wanna be above average, which I'm sure all we wanna be, you wanna make sure you learn the tricks that actually matter, right? The tricks that will help you solve a problem that is supposed to take like 30 seconds in two seconds. Right, like a sum of solutions trick I just told you, negative b over a. Now you don't have to use a quadratic formula and literally waste your time, and by the time you're done, I'll have kids and like a wife. So you don't want to do that, right? You want to get negative b over a, move on to the next question. And now for tricks in terms of the reading section, there's not many, right? It's not, it's not like math where you can uh, manipulate numbers, manipulate uh, variables, and boom, all of a sudden you have the answer. Reading is just words and you got to read, right? But there are some tricks that you can do like annotating like uh, make sure you read the title, the excerpt before the passage that gives you some background information into what the article you're reading is about. Stuff like that will just sharpen your brain and help you become a better reader in general, which you're gonna need later in life and like as you advance to the next grade, but it especially will come very clutch on the ST reading section. So please be sure to like do the small stuff like annotate, read the excerpt, like I said, underline important information, start drawing connections as you read. So this stuff right here is what's going to make you ace the ST reading section. Now, personally, I hated it. That was my weakest part. Uh, I sucked at it. I literally had, to, I think I got like a 600 at one point, but I was on the practice test, but I had to study, you know, all the way. I ended up getting a 740 on the ST that actually mattered, which, like I said, like if you can break that 700 range on the ST reading section, that's pretty clutch. And unfortunately, I don't have um, a course for ST reading, but just use Khan Academy. Trust me, if you incorporate Khan Academy for an ST reading in your study routine, it's going to benefit you a lot, right? So when you have like those two days of ST reading, maybe one day do actual ST reading problems, another day just do Khan Academy. Or one day do the grammar problems on Khan Academy, and one day do the reading passage problems on Khan Academy. That way, you're not only helping yourself on the comprehension section, but you're also helping yourself in the writing section. Because if you're not getting a 44 or like a 42 on the writing section, then you're not doing enough, right? You need to get at least a 42 out of 44. That way, even if you suck at comprehension, you still have some sort of cushion where you can at least go to like a 650 or above. And if you do like even average on the comprehension section, you can look at a 700 plus still, depending on the curve, granted. Now, why does the study routine work? And if you incorporate all these tips, you see my course, and you incorporate all this in your study routine, why will it work? How can I be so sure that will help you get a 200 plus or 300 plus score improvement? Well, this is the exact study routine I follow. This exact routine has helped students I've tutored go from like a 1200 to a 1500, from go from like a 1400 to a 1600. So stuff like this is exactly what you need to do to definitely improve your score, right? This study routine is sharp. It's proven to work for most students that I've you know, encountered, that my company has encountered. So trust this routine, please be sure to do it. And you have to be consistent, that's the biggest thing. If you're not consistent with this routine and you're starting to take days off every single like other day, so you're only studying math once or reading once and not even take the practice test, then you're not doing a study routine, right? So, but if you follow the study routine for the rest of April, if your ST is in May, then you, I can almost guarantee you, but I'm not gonna guarantee you, but I can almost guarantee you that you will at least improve like 150 points, right? Considering you're at like a 1200 right now. If you're at a 1500, best of luck. You already know what you're doing, so you probably don't even need me. I don't, I don't even know what you're watching this video. But if you're not, then this is what you need to do to make sure you get to the score that you want to get to. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Please be sure to check out my course. Use a code for 25% discount. It's almost like done being used, so you can't use it anymore after this. Thank you all for watching. Peace.